My name is Sandy Siegel, and I'm the president of the Transverse Myelitis Association. Pauline, my wife Pauline, was diagnosed with TM in July of 1994. During that year, we found Dick and Deanne Gilmer, whose 18-month-old daughter was diagnosed with transverse myelitis. And together with the Gilmers, Pauline and I established the Transverse Myelitis Association in that same year. We found Paula Lazeri, who also was diagnosed with transverse myelitis when she was a young teen, and Paula became our treasurer. And then, after the internet was founded, I found Jim Lubin on the internet, and Jim, who also had transverse myelitis, and became a full quad and vent dependent at the age of 21, became our IT director. Jim started the Transverse Myelitis Internet Club, which was one of the first listserv groups on the internet. And through the TMIC, we found Debbie Capen in 1996, who became the secretary of the association. We were an entirely volunteer organization for 17 years. We grew from 187 people in 1997 to almost 14,000 people today from more than 100 countries around the world. And this year is our 25th anniversary. We started as the Transverse Myelitis Association because everybody involved in the organization either had transverse myelitis or were family members of someone with TM. In 1994, we were totally unaware of any of the other rare neuroimmune disorders. NMO was referred to in those days as DEVIX and was considered a subvariant of multiple sclerosis. And ADEM was a pretty rare diagnosis that was believed to be a, a disorder that mostly impacted children. AFM and MOG likely existed, but nobody knew about them, and I'm not even going to venture a guess as to what those people were diagnosed with in those days. We learned about NMO and ADEM because people who were being diagnosed with those disorders were being told that the inflammatory attack in their spinal cords was transverse myelitis. TM was being used as a description of a symptom. So a person with ADEM who had an inflammatory attack in the brain were being told by their doctors, you had an inflammatory attack in your brain and transverse myelitis, an inflammatory attack in your spinal cord. People with NMO were hearing the same thing, and people with MS were also hearing those same descriptions of their disorder. The nuance of using transverse myelitis as a, a symptom was lost on everyone. And as a result, people believed that they had more than one disorder. They were calling me and telling me that they had NMO and transverse myelitis or NMO and MS. And I would tell these people, you only get to have one of these disorders. <laughs> so from very early on, we were an organization that advocated for people who had ADEM, NMO, optic neuritis, transverse myelitis, and recently now, AFM and MOG. The name of the organization didn't change, but we knew that it needed to. It didn't change because I was doing the work of the organization part-time. This was an evening and weekend proposition for me. I was Pauline's primary caregiver. We were raising a family. I had a full-time job. I did not have the time and energy to deal with going through a name change. Pauline passed away.
in August of 2017 and losing Pauline has changed my world. I continue to do the work that Pauline would have wanted me to do. Pauline was so proud of this organization and our accomplishments, but she understood that there was so much work ahead of us. Pauline loved this community, and she was so proud of the culture that we created. We created a place for learning and support it is an inclusive community, and we are a caring community. I miss Pauline, and I miss Keizu every day. I met Ben Greenberg when he was a fellow at Johns Hopkins. After he completed his fellowship, he began working with Doug Kerr, Carlos Pardo, David Irani, Adam Kaplan, and Michael Levy at the TM and NMO centers, and then later started his own centers of excellence in TM and NMO at, uh, in Dallas at uh, UT Southwestern, and Ben has developed an expertise in all of the rare neuroimmune disorders. Ben is an educator training the next generation of neuroimmunologists. He's a clinician caring for both children and, and adults with all of these disorders, and he is a researcher working to better understand the disorders, developing diagnostic criteria, working toward more effective acute and long-term therapies, more effective symptom management, and also working to create restorative therapies, strategies to repair the damaged nervous system. Ben also serves on our board of directors. I have a rule that governs my relationship with Ben. I exercise restraint in whatever I ask of him because he never says no. It's my honor to introduce my dear friend and a real mensch, Dr. Ben Greenberg. So I never knew there were any rules that governed Sandy and Mai's relationship. It's, <laughs> it's good to know there's one. So um, I'm honored to be here speaking and, and after Sandy kicking off this year's symposium. And we're, we're doing things a little differently this year. For those of you who have been at symposium in the past, after a brief opening, we dive right into the science and the content of different things. This year's we're doing things uh, quite differently because it is a big day for uh, this association and this community. Sandy referenced the 25 years of history of the Transverse Myelitis Association, but he downplayed uh, several key elements. There were a couple words that he used that I want people to focus on. He talked about uh, his family and the growing family of the TMA, and he talked about a culture. Um, and within organizations, whether they be nonprofit organizations, community-based organizations, academia, private companies, culture matters. The, the culture of the organization, the philosophy of the organization makes a difference in the impact the organization will have on the world around it, both for the community members who sign up to take part and for those who never uh, take part. And for this association, uh, the culture has been one of inclusiveness. It is quite easy when we are afflicted with a situation to look for individuals who share those exact same attributes and labels. And labels in society uh, are psychologically uh, comforting. We like having a label, knowing the community we belong to, but they are also quite isolating. And they create a world in which dogma is allowed to uh, replicate and be passed down when we don't realize there are individuals who have a different label but from whom we may learn quite a bit and from whom we have something to offer. And so it would have been quite easy for Sandy and Pauline to start an organization focused on individuals like Pauline and Sandy, to find a community 
that matched their criteria. Much like a research scientist will set an inclusion exclusion criteria for a clinical trial because we are really mean SOBs and we set strict criteria, we do it for scientific purposes. But associations, communities that come together don't and shouldn't have strict inclusion exclusion criteria because the organization isn't built to do a study. The organization is built to create a community, one that can thrive and learn from each other. The very first time somebody called Sandy, which is what happened in 1994 at his kitchen table, and said, I've been diagnosed with optic neuritis. And he spelled it out and said, well, that's not transverse myelitis. And he said, did it affect your spinal cord? They said, no, it affected my vision. He could have easily said, you've dialed the wrong number. Uh, but his criteria was quite simple. Is this rare? Yes. Is it caused by an immune system affecting the, the central nervous system? Sure. Well, come on in, because there is more to learn from each other uh, together than being apart. So the Transverse Myelitis Association, when it was formed, was formed with the absolute wrong name, but we didn't know it back then. There was no way to know it. But what persevered over 25 years was a culture, a culture of inclusiveness, and it created an organization that, frankly, is unlike any other that exists in the rare disease community, one of inclusiveness of people who have a lot to offer each other and learn from each other versus silos. And so with that in mind, the board, for the last seven years, has recognized that our name was outdated. The Transverse Myelitis Association, as a title, did not represent who we were as an organization or who we were as a community, and the discussions, at times debates, uh, and back and forth began on how should the name change to truly reflect who we are and what we do. And there were several aspects of this that became important to us. So the first aspect of this was to recognize that together as a community, we are stronger when we all live under one tent and that isolating ourselves under individual labels would actually hold us back both from an interpersonal perspective and a scientific perspective. And we realized that together we aren't the TMA, but rather, as voted by the board, the SRNA, the Siegel Rare Neuroimmune Association. So the name change has several important features to it. it recognizes that we are here to serve each other and we are here to serve the greater community of individuals affected by rare neuroimmune disorders. But what was critical to us was to infuse into the title the very basis of the culture that got us to this point and that was of Sandy and Pauline Siegel. 25 years ago when this was being formed, I was in college uh, I've learned that our graduated fellows who are now caring for many of you were in first or second grade. <laughs> we, can, we can all discuss that later. <laughs> and uh, what has happened over the 25 years can be uh, summed up as a generational change. Moving from a place where we identify ourselves by a singular monolithic title to one where we recognize as a community we can do a lot together. And we're gonna talk about that throughout the morning in terms of what we can achieve together. But there are several fundamental aspects, a foundation, if you will, culturally, to what we see within the Siegel Rare Neuroimmune Association. So we talk about the three C's. The Siegels, when they first formed this organization, formed it to connect the community, to get us together in order for people to communicate who had had similar experiences and for people to communicate who had had slightly different experiences because we could learn about the variability and the differences amongst these conditions, where they overlap and where they differ and why. The second was to care. And oftentimes in the setting of a medical uh, situation, care is viewed as a one way, a unidirectional event from healthcare providers to people labeled as patients, when in reality within this, within this community, the care goes multi, in multiple directions. It is from caregivers to their loved ones, it is from one family to another, and it is actually from the families and patients towards the healthcare providers. 
And this has been an incredible organization to be a part of because I'm surrounded by individuals with whom I took an oath to serve, but who have actually been there to care for me as a human being and care for me in terms of my development and where uh, I fit in in terms of a community. And so the caring within the Siegel Rare Neuroimmune Association is not unidirectional, but in fact multidirectional. And ultimately, what we are trying to do together is cure. We're trying to cure in multiple ways. Obviously, we want to cure and restore function to those who have been affected. We want to cure through prevention, making sure these things don't happen to other people. We want to cure through education, because if we can teach people to treat in the early stages in different ways, we can prevent disability. We want to cure through prevention of relapses. There are lots of cures that exist. But at, at its foundation, the association is there to connect us as a community establish a platform for us to care for one another and ultimately lead to cures for the greater world as it stands. And so with these three C's, the connect, care, and cure, the association uh, and the logos listed here looks forward to the next 25 years of working with a diverse community of individuals and showing the world that there is more you can do under a big tent, under a big umbrella, than you can do in individual silos. And so we are extremely grateful for everything Sandy and Pauline uh, have done over 25 years of service to our community and thought it was quite fitting for the organization to reflect their values. So Sandy, thank you.